guys and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since I last uploaded some videos. I know I've only sort of shown you guys what's going on with my studio at the moment and the fact that I've been painting that. That has been taking quite a lot of my time up lately. So today we're back to a video and I really thought that it would be important to get a video out there that talks about some tips for your first ever beauty photo shoot. So I've got a few tips here that I've compiled over the last couple of years that I feel are really important if you're just starting out with beauty photography and if you're not really sure what's going to make it an easier process, I hope that these tips will really help you out with that. Before we get into the video today, I just wanted to say that my new online e-course, Beauty Retouching for Beginners, is coming up for its second launch. So enrollments are now open for the months of August and September. The course runs for six weeks and starts on August 3rd and runs until the 14th of September. So if you are interested in enrolling, just head over to my teachable link that is in the description box below and you can enroll from there. I want to get into the first tip and this is probably one of the most important tips for beauty photography and it's something that I get asked a lot about. And this tip's going to be all about how the skin looks in the photograph and how foundation is applied. Now this is something that I didn't realize first off when I started doing some beauty photo shoots and it does take a while to actually understand the difference between how uh, foundation is applied on the skin tone. And this can be down to the type of makeup artist that you are collaborating with on a shoot as well. So with different makeup artists, they may specialize in different genres of makeups. So this can be potentially a little hurdle to overcome when you first start collaborating with makeup artists on beauty shoots. And with some makeup artists, they may be more used to doing a bridal background. They might be more used to doing long lasting makeup, which sometimes can mean a thicker application of makeup and basically just making sure that it's long lasting. With beauty photo shoots, that's really not the case. I mean, you may be shooting for a couple of hours, tops you'll be shooting for all day, but there is the opportunity there to do touch ups throughout the day. So it really doesn't need to look very thick. It doesn't need to be long lasting. It just needs to look very fresh and most of the time I get questions about how do you get that really nice textured look with beauty retouching and a lot of the time that doesn't have a lot to do with beauty retouching. It's to do with how the makeup is applied in the first place and if you can get that right it will make your retouching process a lot easier when it comes to the skin later on. So if you really want that nice textured look with your beauty photographs it's all about the foundation application and depending on what look you're going for most of the time you'll be looking for a very thin application of foundation and it has to be the right type of foundation too. If you want that really nice glow, then keep that in mind when you're talking to the makeup artist and when you're collaborating with a makeup artist on that type of a shoot because that's going to come down to the foundation application as well. Uh, I feel like this is one of the most important tips that I can give you guys as starting out with beauty photography is make sure the foundation is applied in the best way possible and if you're after a natural skin look, which a lot of photographers are these days with beauty photographs, then try and make sure that application of the foundation is as thin as possible and it looks dewy and glowy off camera because it is near impossible to replicate that in Photoshop later on. Another thing that I get questions about a lot with retouching is how to make the eyes stand out more. And Truth be told, I actually don't do a lot of retouching on the eyes. And the reason I don't do this is because sometimes too much retouching on the eyes can make them look very unnatural. It can make them look very doll-like and it's just not an effect that I like to go for with eyes. So what I do to kind of lift the look of the eyes a lot of the time is done with the photography side of things. It's done on the photo shoot day and I try not to touch that too much in post-processing. So one of the ways you can really try and lift the eyes is by using some catch lights. Now a lot of the time this will automatically happen if you're working in a studio uh, you will have your main light or you might have a couple of lights on set so that will automatically generally create catch lights. A lot of the time I like to use a reflector underneath the model's face and that actually bounces a bit of light back into the eyes and creates another catch light and a lot of the time it will just make them look a little bit more sparkly a little bit more dreamy and really enhance the color as well. So I do recommend doing this and if you're finding that you might only be using like a one light setup and it's not really catching into the eyes enough, sometimes this can be an issue with smaller eyes or hooded eyes. A lot of the light might not actually reach into the eye. So you might have to look at doing something with a reflector or another light to help bring a little bit more light back into the eye and to help create another catch light to make them really stand out more. There is a little trick that I like to do in post-processing and that's by adding in fake catch lights, uh, but I don't always recommend this option because if you can get it right in camera the first time, it is going to make your post-processing so much easier. So that's one of the recommendations I have for making eyes stand out a lot more. And for a lot of beauty photo shoots, the eyes are going to be the focus. So just make sure that you are taking that into consideration as well on your first shoot. 
Another issue that I come across quite regularly, even with my own photos from time to time, because I tend to work in a lot of smaller areas uh, sometimes. I used to shoot in my apartment a lot when I was doing a lot of beauty test shoots. Uh, and that is the issue of having a shadow on the background. And when you're shooting so close up uh, with, with headshots and with beauty shots, it can be quite noticeable when there is a darkness or a shadow on the background. So my really easy tip for this is if you're experiencing too many shadows on the background and you're working in a small space, just try and get the model to step forward from the background as much as possible. I know it's harder in some smaller areas, but this was usually a really easy tip that I used to use to get rid of that shadowed area. The other option is to add in a second light that is pointing towards the backdrop. So if you have another light, it's always good to just have one pointing towards the backdrop, making sure that it's not hitting necessarily the model's face or the model's side profile or anything like that, but just putting it straight to the backdrop to ensure that you do have a little bit more light and it is actually getting rid of that shadowed effect. My fourth tip is all about hands. Now hands are not the easiest to pose and we all know that, I think to a certain extent, whether it's it's outdoor photography, beauty photography. It can be a really big pain to try and pose hands. But it's not so much about the posing that I'm actually going to talk about today. It's actually going to make your life a lot easier, once again, with post-processing, but just ensuring that everything looks good in the image. So one thing I would say is to not forget about the hands and the fingernails. I'd always potentially look at, for beauty shoots in particular, using a nail polish on the model's hands. Sometimes you might have a model that doesn't have the greatest fingernails, so I think the easiest trick to just kind of make this easier on yourself with post-processing is to use a nail polish, whether it's a nude nail polish, a colored nail polish, whatever's easiest to get for yourself. I, I would say that that's probably one of the life-saving tips that I have for a lot of beauty photographs and I definitely recommend that. My fifth tip today really had to be about lighting because lighting is everything when it comes down to it. And depending on how you have your lights set up, it can be unflattering on certain models' faces. So it's really important to experiment with that and make sure that there's no odd shadows coming up on your model's face. I find the easiest way to do this is by having a main light lifted high and angled down onto the model's face so you kind of get that butterfly effect with your lighting. It's one of the most simple beauty kind of setups that you can have and I would really recommend doing that or experimenting with that kind of lighting setup for your first couple of beauty shoots. I think it's generally one of the most flattering setups that you can use and I would just say just be very careful of shadows on the face and and alter the lights if you can when you have to because on the shoot day it's so much easier to just make those adjustments rather than trying to get rid of really heavy awkward shadows later on in Photoshop that's one tip that I would really recommend as well and on that note of retouching difficult things another thing that's really difficult to retouch is hair for your first beauty shoot uh, this might take some getting used to depending on who you have on board for hair or makeup or whoever you've got on board for collaboration I think it's really important to make sure the hair looks as good as it possibly can before you go into post-processing. So make sure that the hair strands are tidy on the day. If you have to use water or hairspray to sort of pat some strands down, then make sure you do that on the day or even swipe them off the face if you notice any stray hairs because that can be really difficult and time consuming and tedious to try and remove later on. Hair has to be one of my least favorite things to retouch, I've noticed over the last few years. And that's one thing that I'll always try and get right on the day of the photo shoot so I don't have to worry too much about it later on. Okay guys, well I really hope you enjoy these tips today and I hope that if you are having your first upcoming beauty shoot that some of these tips will really help you on the day and just little things to look out for that I didn't really realize until years down the track. So I do really hope these tips make your life easier and it's a smoother process for you on your first few beauty shoots. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please do and I will see you in the next video. Bye!